going back today to the book of ceremonial magic um, edited by Arthur Edward Waite or collated by Arthur Edward Waite as well as with some of his notations and I'm going back to the uh, thing I mentioned a long while ago it's the prayer for, uh, within the preparations of the operator section in uh, this version of the Lesser Key of Solomon and I want to just focus in on a few of the words which are used within this one particular prayer. Actually, no, I'll run through the whole thing so you get a good feel. Then we'll just like focus in on asking a few questions, basically, about those particular words and why they've been put into this one particular prayer, which is supposed to repeat um, over a 40-day period. Obviously, we're in length now, so maybe there is... Um, Maybe there's a, another reason why I could be doing this one particular prayer in this video at the moment. It says here, I implore thee, O thou grand and powerful Adonai, master of all spirits, I beseech thee, O Elohim, I implore thee, O Jehovah, O grand Adonai, I give unto thee my soul, my heart, my inward parts, my hands, my feet, my desires, my entire being, O grand Adonai, Dying to be favorable unto me, so be it. Amen. Obviously, this is a prayer which is requesting um, the presence of, power of, and blessing of a Most High God in preparation for performing some form of infernal invocation of uh, some satanic being, some demon from the pit, or um, possibly even communion with an angel or archangel. But why would there be a mention of my hands and my feet? Now I can understand the rationale for my soul, my heart, possibly even my inward parts, my desires, my entire being. But why the reference to my hands and my feet? What have my hands and my feet got to do with anything? Unless, of course, there's another mysticism associated with this, which the book does not necessarily go into in sufficient detail and sufficient depth. Uh, I am recording this on Sunday night, and I've also been getting into the habits, once in a while, of turning on CNBC on Sunday mornings. And occasionally there's one of the various uh, prosperity preachers who would give prayers to people to, to use for their own prosperity. And sometimes they would pray on the hands or they would pray on the feet of the individual or with the hands or using hands and feet imagery somehow. And I thought that was rather curious in the light of the mention of hands and feet within this preparatory prayer within the Lesser Key of Solomon. What precisely is going on there? I mean, what do people pray on? They pray on the five wounds of Jesus Christ, being the whip marks on his back, which they call the stripes, the nail marks in his hands, that's two, then the nails in his feet, that's three, spear in his side, and the crown of thorns on his head. And within modern day Christianity, and this is where it's getting really rather peculiar, there's actually a whole mysticism associated with the various wounds of Jesus Christ and how they should be used in prayer, which means that Christianity, uh, especially of a prosperity-driven evangelical type, is moving much closer to basically witchcraft and occultism than it's probably ever been. The idea being that when a person prays with their hands or prays to their hands or prophesies to their hands in prayer, what they're saying is everything that they do, their hands represent things that they do. So the idea is the nail goes into the hands of Jesus Christ and blood comes out of it, but the blessings of God come onto the hands of the follower of Jesus Christ within their particular interpretation of the, of the mythology. And the feet refer to everywhere that you're going. So if we think about the use within versions of the Lesky of Solomon of hands and feet imagery or symbolism is this talking about everywhere you go and everything that you do and is the work of your hands which is a biblical phrase funnily enough something which is being um, 
skewed in interpretation or meaning towards uh, your spiritualism or your goetic ideology here of attempting to summon a particular spirit or demon. So, I guess my point here is that there's aspects of some forms of modern day Christian thoughts which is being practiced today which overlap substantially with occultism. And I mean substantially. Although it's rather thinly veiled, but the message is there. You know, there is some very interesting cultural crossovers between demonology, black magic, um, Goetia, and of course, modern day Christianity. And I just thought I would point that out to you guys right now. Uh, maybe those are concepts that you could play with in your own time.